Richard Branson is one of the richest men in the UK. The 72-year-old Virgin founder remains one of the 100 richest people in the UK in spite of a sharp financial downturn since 2022. In a report which found that the net worth of the country's richest people rose significantly, Branson was one of the exceptions. He was the subject of controversy when he asked the government for a loan during the pandemic, he eventually concerned a $756 million government loan and a $1.5 billion private loan. Despite these bailouts, Branson's virgin empire continued to suffer setbacks in the post-pandemic years, this is Richard Branson's net worth today, and why it dropped since 2022. Put Richard Branson and his family's collective net worth in 2023 at $3.1 billion, a drop of $2.3 billion, 42.6%, since 2022. Branson is now 77th on the Sunday Times Rich List, a record of the wealthiest people and families living in the UK. Branson has dropped 33 places on the list since last year, although he is still in the top 0.0001% of the UK's richest people. Branson sits just behind Sir Anwar Purvez and his family, the best way owner's wealth rose by more than $1.3 billion to $3.05 billion, and ahead of Page Industries owner Sundar Genomal and his family, who is a new entry on the list with a net worth of $2.86 billion. The list leader, Gopi Hinduja and his family, owner of the transnational Hinduja group, retained the top spot from last year with a net worth of $44.1 billion, up by more than $8.2 billion since 2022. Overall, despite the cost of living crisis and continued fallout from the COVID pandemic, it has been a good year for the country's richest people. Although the number of billionaires fell by six in the last 12 months, the four richest UK billionaires saw their combined wealth grow by more than $50.4 billion. Richard Branson made his fortune through a diverse range of business ventures, primarily through founding the Virgin Group in 1970. Virgin is a multinational group of more than 400 com Virgin Records, established in 1972, signed major artists including the Rolling Stones and Sex Pistols. Branson later branched out into airline travel, telecommunications, finance, and more. Virgin Airways revolutionized the commercial airline industry in the 1980s and helped to make Branson into a household name. In 1979, Branson bought Necker Island in the Caribbean for $180,000 and spent $10 million transforming it into a luxury resort. He also invested in sectors including hotels, health clubs, space travel, and renewable energy. Branson first became a billionaire in 1991 and has retained the label ever since, despite his net worth fluctuating dramatically. Branson's net worth had dropped before, it dipped slightly in 2015 before remaining steady for three years. In 2019 and 2020 it dropped by around a third, but rallied again the following year. At a time when many other billionaires were growing their wealth. The 40% drop in Branson's net worth has been blamed on the devastating effect of the COVID pandemic on the leisure industries which Virgin is heavily involved in. Virgin has also suffered more recent setbacks, a failed satellite launch in January was followed by the company responsible, Virgin Orbit, filing for bankruptcy in March. No fewer than 85% of Virgin Orbit staff were laid off and its assets were sold off for less than 1% of the company's estimated value. For Richard Branson, being an entrepreneur has a lot less to do with the hardwired business side of things and everything to do with the uniqueness of the idea at hand. Entrepreneur recently attended a talk the billionaire gave at Virgin Hotels Dallas amid the relaunch of the company's entrepreneur-focused program, RM72. The event brought together entrepreneurs, mentors, and ments to help foster business connections and listen to Branson dole out his ever-coveted advice. During the gathering, Branson said that when he embarks on a new endeavor or business with Virgin, he thinks less about how much it will cost the company and more about whether or not the idea is strong enough to separate itself from competitors. My attitude is, screw it, let's do it. Let's see if we can create something better than anybody else has done it and the figures should stack up at the end of the year, that's been my approach, he said at the event. And sometimes we've fallen flat on our face, but we've always, I think, created something special. So even where things haven't worked out, we have left our hopefully happy memories and what our team tried. And fortunately, more worked out than not. Branson, who founded Virgin Records in 1972, has since gone on to pursue multiple other endeavors under the Virgin umbrella, including Virgin Hotels, Virgin Galactic, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Voyages, and more. Branson said that the importance of branding and wanting to use that branding to be the best in any given space or industry has been one of what he believes is any entrepreneur's key to success, regardless of budget and regardless of industry. What matters is can you create the best? The best hotel? 
Can you create the best cruise line? Can you create the best airline? Can you create the best train company? Can you create the sexiest space company? And so on, he said. If you can, if you create something really, really special, generally speaking, as long as you haven't completely messed up, the figures will add up in the end. And so, at Virgin, I think our teams have created the best in every field. Virgin Group began with Virgin Records in 1972, it has now expanded to include over 40 companies and employs over 60,000 people in 35 countries. Here is a brief look at how the fun-loving Branson grew his Virgin megabrand. Sir Richard Branson is a 73-year-old entrepreneur whose net worth stands at an estimated $3.4 billion. Branson's first entrepreneurial venture was founding a magazine, called Student, at 16, he owns, or has owned, airlines, record labels, radio stations, hotels, and many other companies. Branson owned Virgin America Airlines until 2016 when Alaska Air acquired the company, although Branson opposed the acquisition, he lacked the votes to stop it. Branson currently owns Virgin Records, the label that was home to the Rolling Stones, the Sex Pistols, and others. In 2001, his company teamed with Sprint to launch Virgin Mobile. Richard Branson started his entrepreneurial career at age 16 with a magazine, called Student, which interviewed celebrities, the first issue sold almost $8,000 worth of advertising. He dropped out of school to promote his magazine. In 1969, he started a mail-order record business that used the magazine office as an operating base. In 1970, Branson launched Virgin Mail Order Records. After a rocky start, he owned 14 record stores by 1972. He used the profits from his record store chain to found the music label Virgin Records in 1972. He earned his first million dollars in 1973 when Virgin recording artist Mike Oldfield sold over 5 million copies of his record, Tubular Bells. Part of Branson's early success at Virgin Records came as a result of his willingness to sign the Sex Pistols and other controversial artists. Other popular Virgin acts included the Rolling Stones and Ozzy Osbourne. By the end of the decade, Virgin Music had become one of the top six record companies in the world, with branches in Germany, France, and Japan. In 1979, Branson purchased Necker Island in the British Virgin Islands for $180,000. Necker Island is his primary residence. The 1980s. Virgin Books and Virgin Video were founded in 1981. Within two years, Branson's business empire included more than 50 different companies with combined sales of more than $17 million. In 1984, Branson paired with lawyer Randolph Fields to start one of his most famous companies yet, Virgin Atlantic. The airline took off, pardon the pun, due to its fine customer service and innovative in-flight comforts, such as free ice cream, seatback video screens, and in-flight massages. In 1992, Branson reluctantly sold Virgin Records for $1 billion in order to keep Virgin Atlantic afloat. These were tumultuous years for Virgin Atlantic. Terrorist attacks kept people from flying, and larger rival British Airways engaged in what Branson called a hostile campaign designed to cause permanent damage to Virgin. Branson successfully sued British Airways for libel, with a judge ruling in 1993 that British Airways pay Branson and Virgin $945,000 in damages, plus legal fees estimated at around $3 million, and deliver an apology. In 1997, Branson started Virgin Trains. In 2001, Virgin Group launched Virgin Mobile as a joint venture with Sprint. In 2020, Sprint shut down Virgin Mobile and transferred users to Boost Mobile. In September 2004, Branson turned his eyes to the sky again and joined forces with Burt Rutten, an American aeronautical engineer, to launch Virgin Galactic. The company would offer licensed spacecraft that could take tourists to space. Branson had a vision of providing cheap space tourism. An unfortunate series of events, including a crash in 2014, rerouted the date of the first commercial space flights. In 2021, they had their first successful, fully crewed spaceflight. In February 2022, Virgin Galactic opened up ticket sales to the public. The price of a reservation is $450,000. The company's first spaceflight with tourists was launched in August 2023. In December 2023, Virgin Galactic announced its Galactic 6 mission launch in January 2024, the company's 11th spaceflight. At one point, Branson owned three space-focused companies, Virgin Galactic, Virgin Orbit for Cargo, and Vox Space for Government Missions. Vox Space was a subsidiary of Virgin Orbit, Virgin Orbit and all its subsidiaries halted operations and laid off all of its staff in 2023. 
Branson launched social activist projects that included Virgin Unite to combat HIV and AIDS, and the Branson Center of Entrepreneurship to teach entrepreneurial skills in developing countries. Virgin Unite. Welcome to Virgin Unite. Richard Branson reached the edge of space in his Virgin Galactic rocket plane in July 2021. The plane, known as Unity, reached a height of 53.5 miles, or 282,480 feet. Branson attributes his success to luck, speed, and hard work. His books and biographies cite his daredevil ideas, originality, willingness to buck norms, and his persistence. Branson never allowed inexperience to discourage him from being a dynamic and daring entrepreneur, he named his company Virgin because he and his employees were all new to the business. His extraordinary service to his employees and clients rated him as the United Kingdom's celebrity dream boss in an opinion poll by Cancer Research UK. His philanthropy earned him accolades as the most admired business owner over the past five decades in the Sunday Times in 2014. Sir Richard Branson has offered to put up his private island, Necker Island, as collateral in order to save his airline, Virgin Atlantic, from collapse. In an open letter to Virgin Group staff Branson wrote that Virgin Group operates within many of the industries hardest hit by the coronavirus, including aviation, leisure, hotels, and cruises with more than 70,000 employees across 35 countries. As with other Virgin assets, our team will raise as much money against the island as possible to save as many jobs as possible around the group, Branson wrote, as reported by business insiders Rosie Perper. The Virgin Group brings in more than $21 billion annually in global revenue. As the billionaire chairman, Branson has overseen approximately 500 companies and is known for his charisma and eccentric behavior. Ever the savvy businessman, Branson has spent some of his billions indulgently, but mostly to make money in return. When it comes down to it, Branson is rather frugal. He also donates much of his time and money to philanthropic efforts. See how the eccentric leader spends his billions. In 1972, he founded Virgin Records and went on to Branson is well known for his jet-setting adventures and eccentricity, such as dressing as a butterfly to run a marathon to launch the Virgin Group conglomerate. Virgin Media, Virgin Australia, and Virgin Atlantic are some of the biggest companies under Virgin Group. Overall, Branson is frugal, largely because he grew up in a middle-class family. The idea of having a possession that is there just as pure luxury, and is not actually paying its bills is something which I'd be embarrassed about, he told The Guardian in 2002. Branson once hired a plane for $3,000 when passengers were bumped off his flight to the Virgin Islands. He advertised the flight going one way at $39 per person and made $69. It was his first ever flight, he said. And then there's the island Branson owns, in 1978, he purchased Necker Island in the British Virgin Islands for $180,000. Five years and $10 million later, Branson built a resort on the island, which doubles as a home for him. It's welcomed many celebrity guests, from Kate Winslet and Kate Moss to Princess Diana and Larry Page. The Obamas have even vacationed there. In 2006, he estimated that the island's value had increased to $60 million, a 33,233% increase from his purchase price. He previously called it the best financial move he ever made. But in April 2020, Branson offered Necker Island up as collateral to save the Virgin Group from collapse during the coronavirus pandemic. In 2009, Branson bought a 32-meter catamaran, which he named Necker Bell, for around $6 million. Branson chartered her at Necker Island starting at $60,000 a week and recently sold her for $3 million. He also bought a mini-submarine, which he named the Necker Nymph, for a reported $547,482. Starting prices to rent her begin at $25,000 for seven nights at Necker Island. But Necker Island is only one of Branson's luxury real estate holdings. The rest of Branson's properties are located in Africa, like Mont Rochelle, a hotel and vineyard near Cape Town in South Africa. Virgin Limited Edition. He also owns Sun Bagnola, located in northwest Majorca, the estate offers three luxury villas for guests. Elsewhere in Europe, Branson purchased the Lodge, a ski resort in the Swiss Alps. One-room rentals are around $945 a night and exclusive use in the winter for a week is $89,916. Branson also owns a resort in Morocco called Kasbah Tamadat. There's no word on how much he purchased it for, but the 28 rooms each run for $717 a night. Branson has a thing for safaris. He owns Mahali Mzuri, a tented safari camp in Kenya's Maasai Nara National Reserve with a 40-foot infinity pool. Rooms are around $590 a night. And Yulusaba, his fourth African property, located in the Sabi Sand Game Reserve, 
also offer safari experiences. Before taking up residence on Necker Island, Branson lived in his Oxfordshire mansion in Kidlington. It's unknown how much he paid for it, but he did sell it to his children for $1.78 million. He also owned a home in Holland Park, London. He bought it for $3.3 million and later listed it for $23.12 million. In 2002, Branson still paid a mortgage. It makes economical sense to me to have a mortgage, he told The Guardian. I don't have a specially arranged discount, only because it might be embarrassing to have a special rate. You wouldn't find a lot of expensive artworks hanging in any of his homes. He prefers to buy watercolors at a reasonable price. He still owns a refurbished houseboat in London that he purchased for around $2,600, which is available to rent for a little more than $1,000 a week. He said never plans to sell it. To jet around from place to place, Branson owns his own private plane, a Falcon 50 EX, which costs around $21 million brand new. Branson also drives a Range Rover, but it's gifted to him every year from the brand. And he doesn't spend much on clothes. He wears the same pair of jeans every day with a plain white shirt, whatever I'm doing, whether it's a speech, whether it's going to see the queen, you know, whatever it is. Branson previously said people won't let him pay for things. I'll be in a restaurant and the manager will say, oh no, it's on the house, he once said in an interview. But he tips big when someone deserves it. I certainly tip larger if I feel that people have done their work with a smile. But I don't splash out because I think that's embarrassing, he said. He also tips generously when he has a special request, he once offered a London cab driver two first-class plane tickets, worth around $5,276. One thing Branson doesn't spend his money on, gambling. He once took his two kids to Las Vegas and gave them each $40 in casino chips to teach them the perils of gambling. However, the lesson failed because they accidentally left a few chips behind, which tripled into a small fortune. Branson is big on philanthropy. He devotes 80% of his time to Virgin Unite, the charitable arm of the Virgin Group. Branson and the Virgin Group fund overheads and costs to the nonprofit. The charity has founded and supported a variety of projects including the B-Team, the Carbon Room, the Elders, and Oceans Unite. Branson puts time and money toward the environment. In 2007, he offered $25 million to scientists who could discover ways to save the planet from climate change as part of the Earth Challenge. He also pledged $3 billion over the course of a decade to develop low-carbon fuel and alleviate global warming. And with more than 60 companies in Virgin's portfolio, Branson continues to invest money in expanding and growing Virgin with new ideas. To Branson, the biggest luxury isn't money, if we're talking about personal luxuries, and the luxury of being your own boss, the biggest reward is the amount of time one can find for family and friends. Richard Branson's Cruise Yacht Billionaire Richard Branson's cruise ship occasionally sails into Wellington. Resilient Lady is a 2,700-passenger, adults-only cruise ship and was once blighted by power outages in Napier CBD caused by a cable fault. More than 200 properties were affected by the power cut. Virgin Voyages, which runs the Resilient Lady and her sister, Brilliant Lady, has struggled with delays and cancellations to sailings of both ships, citing global issues. The newest ship, Brilliant Lady, was due to sail from Miami on her maiden voyage in December last year but cancelled its sailing saying that the launch had run into unexpected issues in staffing and building. Despite careful planning, Virgin Voyages is facing unexpected construction, supply chain and staffing challenges that have delayed the introduction of Brilliant Lady. Virgin Voyages wants to make sure that when the ship launches, it can deliver the standards its sailors have come to expect from an award-winning brand like Virgin Voyages.